Okay, I just want to quickly show uh, the software I threw together to test this brushed um, DC motor driver that's pretty standard for um, the older and semi-recent um, remote control cars. I'm using the gamepad that we always use for Scuttle and um, you can see that I've got it hooked up. It's got the little light that comes on there in the back and the pulse width is what determines the speed that I'm sending as a command. But there's a few extra details to this kind of ESC. So I'm gonna jump into the frame and show you the gamepad and then I'll come back to the code here. Okay, so now you know what my thumb is doing to send these commands. And um, the first column on the printout is the axis. That's the, the value that it's capturing from the gamepad itself. Um, it goes from 1 to negative 1. That's the limits that you can send to the gamepad. But um, it doesn't exactly get translated to the motor. Um, this motor controller is uh, based on the hobby kind of standard where 50 hertz is the speed of the, um, the frequency of the signal that goes out. And then the pulse width ranges from um, one millisecond to two milliseconds. And I'll pull up, I'll just show a, a little reference on that from one of my favorite, uh, favorite websites ever. Let's see if we can get this here. So this is from Last Minute Engineers. Um, you, you can visit this page and you can see um, the standard is one millisecond is the minimum. And yes, that's a servo. Two milliseconds is the maximum. That's, um, that's for a 180 degree servo, but it's also the same signal pattern you send out for motors. Okay, so when we were testing um, what is the proper signal to get this motor driver to send the maximum and minimum uh, voltages? It's, it's shown here. So I'm mapping my gamepad axis to some kind of uh, pulse width, which is um, here at the maximum I've got 11% of a uh, 20 millisecond um, duty cycle, uh, 20 millisecond period gives me close to a little bit more than two milliseconds because each one of these is calibrated a little differently. Then if I go on the negative side, um, I found that 0 0.51, 0 0.548 milliseconds doesn't sound any different than 0.54, you see. So there's a, there's a point at which the, the control saturates and there's actually no more change. And if you go way out of the range, then it won't respond at all. And then the, finally, the last nuance that needs to be tested is when you find the middle point, you'll find that you can't just switch from forward to reverse. You can from reverse to forward, but forward to reverse means, watch, I'll just, I'll flip my axis right now. See, it doesn't listen. It doesn't like it because First, it needs to see that uh, pulse width that corresponds to the neutral. And I found right now that the neutral is about 1.3 milliseconds and it's about 6.5%. Um, uh, Sorry, this, this percent down here is not exactly percent, it's fraction, a fraction of one. So then after I go to the near zero point and send that signal, then I can go to reverse and it'll follow my commands. So this is how you, the easiest way to find your center point is just allow it to sweep to above and below this 20 milliseconds and two milliseconds, sorry, one and two milliseconds. Um, gradually sweep through it with some kind of analog control and then you will find what's the, the midsection for your controller. And this is an awesome value for this, um, this brushed DC motor controller because um, it has uh, it has up to 320 amps. That's what it claims. Maybe I won't, I won't try to push it that hard, but it can take um, almost double the voltage that we're using. It can take 
um, a lot of current. It can pass uh, current to two motors simultaneously. It's quite robust and and the value is very good because it's only, I mean, this was less than 10 US dollars. It was like closer to five US dollars. Um, and, and these are available in many different variations. So it's a really good value if you want a more high performance motor driver than the, the plain H-bridge like L298N or the one we've got on Scuttle currently.